morning, Quadcopter 101 here. In today's shot, it goes to Joey Allen Buenaflor. Joey was first to say first in one of my recent videos and thus wins this shot at, so congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a review of the new Ishing E129 helicopter. Now, the E129 helicopter is an upgraded version of the Ishing E119 helicopter, which looks uh, just about identical to the E129. However, there are some differences. Uh, let's go over real quick what the new upgrades are for the 129 versus the E119. Um, the E129 now has altitude hold capability. The original E119 did not have that capability, folks. It was uh, manually flown through the throttles. You had to learn uh, throttle management with the E119, and that was a little bit difficult for beginner flyers to get this into the air without crashing it. Um, now we, we have, uh, well, I'll demonstrate altitude when we go out in the field here, but um, it's easy to maintain altitude now with the E129. Although I've got to admit, it may limit the agility of the helicopter. I, just, I really love the E119. That's why I still got it. Okay. Very agile uh, helicopter. But the E129 without the altitude hold uh, maybe is meant more for beginner flyers. Um, you know, advanced pilots would would like to see 119, but again, this E129, I guess, is designed and intended for beginner pilots to enter into helicopter flying. Um, the other difference between the E119 and the E129 is the E119 used generic uh, 350 milliamp hour batteries with white low C connectors. You could easily find the placements for these uh, to use with this, but now they've switched to uh, modular batteries. Um, they say they're 300 milliamp hour, and if they are, that's 50 milliamp hour or less. Um, this battery would give this drone or this helicopter about 15 minutes of flight time, which is pretty damn good. I'm sorry, excuse my French. Pretty darn good uh, flight time for a uh, toy helicopter. Okay, but now with this um, 300 milliamp hour, it's also predicted to give 15 minutes of flight time. We'll actually see it when we take it out into the field because I am going to try to fly for those 15 minutes. So we'll see. Um, those are the two, two big differences between the two helicopters. Um, we'll go over, there are some other minor differences we'll go over here as we uh, uh, go through the review. But let's talk about it. Let's go into more detail on the E129. Now, as with the E119, this is a uh, four channel helicopter with throttle control. Um, it does not have, uh, uh, what do you call it, collective control. It has throttle control to increase the speed of the rotors to cause rise and fall of the helicopter. On a real helicopter, uh, what happens is you have collective control and the swash plate would rise to change the pitch on the blades to increase the pitch to get it to rise or fall. Instead, this uses just simple throttle control or uh, speed of the RPM in the motor, in effect, to increase the speed of the rotation to, to rise and fall of the drone. But it does have cyclic control. Now, what is cyclic? Cyclic adjusts the pitch of the rotor blades as they go around 360 degrees to control the uh, roll of the helicopter and the pitch of the helicopter forward and backward. So that, that's what made the E119 so um, agile uh, that I, you know, in my previous review of it, um, and that's also included with this helicopter. So I'm hoping to see similar agility, although not the same type of throttle agility. It's going to be more sluggish and going up and down, which is good, okay, and bad. We'll see when we get out in the field, and we'll discuss that. Um, it is fly barless design, which means there is no fly bar, as you see on uh, most RC helicopters, or actually older RC helicopters. I guess in the future, more will be switching, if not all will be switching, to electronic stabilization, which this has, okay. This has uh, three uh, gyros and three accelerometers, which they call 6G stabilization, to uh, electronically provide input to the controls to stabilize the helicopter. So that's that's cool in itself. Again, I mentioned it has altitude hold capability. Again, that's for uh, to help beginner flyers maintain the altitude of the helicopter once you get it in there, so you don't go crashing into the ceiling and crashing into the ground and crashing into the ceiling and crashing into the ground. Uh, this will automatically maintain altitude on its own by with this center stick on this throttle control on here. Um, it's lightweight at only 47 grams. What that means, this does not require registration in most countries, which is a big advantage, huge advantage these days. Um, again, I mentioned these modular 3.7 volt batteries. 
This makes it very easy to plug in the battery. You know, this the E119, you had to fiddle around to get that battery connector in there. This one, you just stick the battery in the back and slide it forward, and that turns on the helicopter. I don't know if you see the on switch there, or the flashing light to indicate that it's on. But that's how you turn on the helicopter. Just plug in the battery, slide it in. Um, that battery, again, is predicted to give 15 minutes flight time. I'm not so sure since it is... You know, this, they say this is only 300 milliamp hours. As I said, again, the original battery was 350 milliamp hour. So we might see a little bit of less flight time with this particular battery. We'll find out again once we get to the field. Um, it is predicted to give 80 to 100 meter range with this controller here. Um, the also, controller also has low voltage control warning. I guess it, it beeps. Um, it has stall protection and it has out of control protection. I don't know what that means. It probably means that this controller also beeps when you get too far away. So in effect, if you hear beeping from this controller, that means bring this drone or this helicopter back close and land it. You're either low in battery or you're getting out of range, too far away from the controller. So keep that in mind if you hear beeping. Um, the helicopter itself has 8520 motor main motor let's show you the inside of this thing but here's the 8520 motor uh, it's a brushed motor um, there are spares available for this helicopter for just about every part on this helicopter because this uses the same components as the e119 and there are spares available already for this older helicopter so you you will be able to find replacement parts for it um, this use the tail rotor on this or tail rotor motor is a 0615 uh, brush motor. So, in effect, this has two brush motors on it for uh, control of the main rotor and the tail rotor. Um, let's see, I want to go over the cons of this. I haven't mentioned, again, this uses brushed motors. And what that means is brush motors do fail with time, with age. Uh, so, someday you will, if you, especially if you fly this a lot, you will eventually need to change these motors. But again, spare uh, spares are available, and the good thing about it is they are plug-in motors. So, um, when you change this tail rotor, you may need to wrap around the uh, control line. I don't know, since they, it seems the control, um, the power line that goes to this tail rotor seems to be threaded through this um, tail boom here, you know, this carbon fiber tail boom. So it may be a bit difficult to get <laughs> to thread that through there. And if it is, you could always wrap it around and put some shrink tubing on the back, which is what I used to do with the old WL toys. Uh, I forgot what motors or drones those were. But they had similar tail booms to these, and that was the way you repair them. You didn't thread it through there. You just wrapped the, the uh, uh, cable around that and then shrink tubed it on there. So that's how I would recommend replacing that if that turns out to be a problem. Um, other things about this... It uses proprietary batteries. You know, these are generic batteries that you'd be able to find just about anywhere. These 350 with white low C. These you are going to need to purchase from Banggood. And these days I know that LiPo battery shipment, uh, international LiPo battery shipment can be an issue. Uh, luckily, uh, Banggood provides you with three batteries. Okay. Now these three batteries I would not recommend using for back-to-back -back flying especially if you're getting 15 minutes flight time because that will guarantee burnout of those motors. You've got to let them sit for at least 15 minutes between flights to cool down. But um, the advantage of these having three batteries is uh, when one of them burns out, you still got two more to go with. So keep that by. Um, I also mentioned uh, altitude hold. Um, again, that may be less nimble than the original E119. We will find out when we go flying. And finally, there's no LCD screen on the controller. The original controller, here it is the original controller, notice the throttle is not centered, which means there's no altitude hold. But the original had an LCD screen, but this LCD screen, the information on, that was on here was kind of minor. Um, there was battery power of the controller and, and uh, stick positions, which you can see the stick positions by just looking at them. So, And also, uh, I think it had throttle trim positions. That That is useful, <laughs> but that was about it. So that's about the only information I found that was useful on the original. But let's go over that controller, by the way, our new controller. Um, this is available mode 1 or mode 2. However, 
with both of those. You can't switch between mode one and mode two. However, the this is a dedicated mode two controller, and when you switch to you switch mode one and mode two by holding this button down while turning on the controller. Now I've switched to mode one, so throttle should now be on the right stick. No, it was on the left stick originally. <laughs> okay, let's see if that's true. There we go. Now throttle's on the right stick. And to switch back, you go hold that button down again on the right and then turn it on and then let go and now throttle should be on the left stick and it proved me wrong let's turn it on again that's ah, on the left stick now so you can't switch back and forth with these controllers by holding down this button here while turning on the controller other buttons on this controller um, this is your automatic takeoff and automatic landing button you do it by a quick press and it is, this button also serves as emergency stop so if your helicopter gets hung up in a tree Hold this button down for two seconds and the motor will stop. And you want to do that, especially if it gets stuck in a bush or a tree or crash lands. Make sure your motors are off by do, holding this down and that will preserve your motor. If these you crash into a tree or a bush while that motor is still trying to spin, you probably will burn out that motor and you'll be, be wanting to buy a new motor. <laughs> so remember, remember this button. Also, don't press this button while in flight or the drone will fall from the air. <laughs> so, okay, um, other things in the controller. This is for uh, rudder control. This is for pitch control, trim, rudder trim, pitch trim. And, uh, boy, I bet you yeah, I got these wrong. <laughs> rudder, yaw trim, pitch trim, and roll trim. Right and left here. That's what these are for. Now, this is not throttle trim. This is for switching between rates. You have low rate and high rate, and you switch between the two by going up like that. Two, two beeps is low rate, uh, and uh, one beep is low rate for beginners. So more advanced and more nimble, By you, you want to hear that two beeps, and beginner pilots, one beep. And let's see what happens. And it, does, it works both ways, so you can either push up or down, and it'll switch back and forth. So that's the controller. Other things you get in the box, you get a user manual. Again, you get the three batteries. Now, this is the battery charger. Now, I forgot to mention, these batteries are charged via a micro USB port. However, do not use just a regular micro USB cable to, to charge this. You want to use this charger. And the reason being, there is no indicator on this battery to tell you when the battery is fully charged. And if you use a uh, micro USB, a regular micro USB cable, uh, you, there is a danger of you overcharging and damaging this battery. You don't want to do that. This battery charger that they provide you with a micro USB port um, has a little red light that comes on to tell you when the battery is being charged. And when the battery is fully charged, the, the charging stops and the light goes out to tell you that the battery is charged. So that's why you want to use this. You don't want to overcharge these batteries. Other things you get in the box, you get a spare set of propellers or rotor blades. Actually, I sh shouldn't say propellers. These are rotor blades. <laughs> is the correct uh, term and the other thing you get in here is it looks like you get a set of pitch pitch control links for the uh, cyclic and you get a spare tail rotor blade and a micro screwdriver and a little allen wrench to help you uh, do maintenance on this helicopter and it looks like you need that allen wrench to remove the blades because there you go hex key um, pins on these blades. So that's about it, folks. Let's put this back together, take it out into the field, and also I might take it in my basement, too. And let's see how this thing flies. So hope you enjoy these flights. Good morning. Quadcopter 101 here. We are out here at uh, Pleasant Ridge Test Flight Facility uh, with my test flight of the Ishin E129. Okay, to get this in the air, it's pretty simple, folks. Uh, you just slide the battery into the back here. You know, there's its battery. Um, it tells you which side is top on the battery so you can uh, make good connection with the internal pins in there. So make sure you check that before you slide it in. And all you do is just slide it in. And the red uh, light comes on in the back telling you you are powered up. And put it on the ground and then turn on the transmitter like so. And up and down in the transmitter to bind it to the quadcopter or the helicopter. So we should be ready to go. So for automatic takeoff... All we need to do, folks, is press this takeoff button. And there it goes. Okay, and it is drifting to the left a bit, so let's bring it over here. We're going to trim it. 
and I'm trimming it by pushing to this way and I want it to come back toward me. It's drifting to the forward and drifting to the left and there we go. We are trimmed. Let's see if it stays, stays trimmed. Let's bring it toward us, pushing forward. Notice how that altitude hole works real well on this. Uh, remember, the original that I flew did not have altitude hold capability. This makes it a lot easier for beginner pilots to fly it. Okay, how's it holding position now? It's still drifting a bit, so keep that in mind. It will drift a bit, <laughs> but let's see how agile this thing is. I am in beginner rate. Beginner rate. I need to give it a little bit of throttle to keep it, and when I pick up speed there, it, it will drop a little bit. Okay, how about when I turn it? Now, this one is not as nimble, at least in beginner mode, as the original E119. And I wouldn't expect it to be because it's meant, again, for beginners. Let's bring it up close to see this. This is it up close. I hope that's coming in. <laughs> okay, let's go to higher rate. And again, I'm going to press this button here till we hear it beep beep. And let's see if it becomes more nimble. Well, the turns are more nimble. And going that way. Turn it around. Yeah, it turns a lot more nimble. And it seems to be running a lot faster. And the altitude hold works real well in the turns. Watch, when I turn like that, when it stops, it does not climb. Uh, the E119, when you turn, you know, uh, you're giving up that uh, kinetic energy for altitude, potential energy. This one automatically compensates. Seems to automatically compensate when you, when you turn. Watch. See, it doesn't go climbing up in the turns like the E119 would do. Uh, and you would counter that in the E119 by lowering the throttle. But this seems to be holding its position well. Okay, bringing it over, bringing it over. Let's do that max yaw right. Max left yaw, max right yaw. Okay, check the max yaw right. Let's bring it over closer in toward me. Now I got the wind directly at my back. But I want to try, okay, left and right roll, or right tilt. Okay, turning it, and it's actually, it flies well. Now again, not as nimble as the 119, but again, the 119 is more difficult to fly for beginner pilots. This one's a lot easier because you don't have to mess with that throttle stick, okay, uh, to keep it in the air. Let's bring it down and toward us. Now, I am curious about its 15-minute um, flight time. I'm not sure it can do that. I'm still in high rate. Let's go back to low rate. Back to low. No, what was that? That's not low rate. I just hit that M1, M2 switch. That does nothing when you're flying. Let's see here. Okay, we were back in beginner's rate. Back to beginner's rate. Yeah, much, much more docile. Having, actually having a hard time coming into this little breeze at my back. So I'm going to have to go back at the higher rate. And there we go. And now it goes into the breeze. Let's let it, let it come back with the breeze. This is the breeze I got pushing it back. <laughs> going back into that breeze. Going over here. And let's tilt it this way to show you that it is the breeze coming sideways. Okay, bring it back toward me. But yeah, more appropriate for beginners, the 129. Let's give it a little bit of throttle there. It's, I'm in low rate. Or high rate. I'm in high rate. I forgot the Now, when you pick up speed, it does drop a bit, so you are going to probably have to give it uh, more throttle uh, as you pick up speed. See? Here, let's see here. When you let's try to demonstrate that pushing forward uh, and there see it descends a bit and the reason being it's used again using a barometer for the altitude hold a pressure sensor and as the speed builds up the static pressure drops they call it static pressure <laughs> and it's and it's it thinks that it's uh, climbing when it's not when it really isn't it's just Static pressure is dropping in the barometer. 
thinks it's climbing and it compensates for that by lowering the throttle a bit. Let's try bank turns. Actually over my head, through the sun. Now I'm blind. <laughs> so. Boy, this is probably hard for you guys to see this little helicopter. I better keep it closer. But uh, yeah, it flies well for a beginner. So my recommendation, folks, if you're an intermediate drone pilot or above the 119 beginner pilot, yeah, definitely this one. Makes it much easier so you don't mess with the throttle too much. Zipping it around. Let me just walk right in the field here. I like this field that I found here. I hope I don't get kicked off of it. <laughs> but I, I have other secondary and tertiary flight facilities <laughs> in case I do get kicked off someday. But I don't think so. Uh, there's nobody using it when I come here this time of day, early morning. And uh, secondly, it's uh, the sports season, you know, baseball season's about over. I think it is over here. This field is very active in summer, but in fall, not so much. Unless the kids are back in school, not so much. Well, this thing flies a long time. It actually might make it to 15 minutes. Now again, uh, okay, this one, when you pull back on the stick, here, let's, let's demonstrate that again. I'm gonna give it full speed again, and then I'm gonna stop, try to stop on a dime by pulling back on the stick. Now the 119 would climb into the air when you do this. It would climb up real high. This one doesn't. You can see that the automatic uh, altitude hold takes effect instantly <laughs> and adjusts for that. Let's try it again. See? Again, the 119 would just skyrocket in the air when you pull back, back on the stick like that from high speed, from going forward and then pulling back. This one don't do that. The altitude hold kicks in. <laughs> it's pretty neat that they could build a helicopter with cyclic control for the price that this is going. It's, you know, let's bring it in so you can see those pitch control links. If you can, let me go to a lower rate too. But bring it down a bit. See the pitch control links there, just below the the rotor hub, or the um, yeah the rotor hub there. It's, and there's a little swash plate there. Now, let me get a throttle. Um, you know I might be wrong. That might actually be acting as a swash plate too. That cyclic control here because it's just being controlled by those two pitch control links and if I push up I think they are both pushing up on that swash plate I'm not sure <laughs> so maybe this does have true uh, both cyclic and collective control I'm going to higher rate here to fight the breeze Going downstream, downwind, coming around. Now the next thing I want to do is fly this indoors. Down in my indoor flight test facility there in the basement. <laughs> um, I already did actually, folks. Um, it is a bit sensitive, okay, for indoor flying. So you, you do need to be a bit careful in, indoors. But uh, outdoors... It's a blast. Like the 119 is a blast too. Bring it up close again so you can see it up close. I'm trying to keep it steady with the breeze. It's kind of hard in a breeze. Okay, go in or die wind again. Let's go up higher. Giving throttle.
saddle, climbing a bit. It's a bit more breezy up there. I'm coming back down because it is a bit breezy up there. Next thing to do is put a uh, FPV camera on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's FPV camera would be a little too heavy for this little helicopter, I think. A little all-in-one. That would still be a bit too heavy for it, so never mind that. So you fly around for 15 minutes. Let's see, what else can I do with this? Going to ride again. <laughs> Zoom. Zoom. So let's try the automatic landing. We haven't done that. Let's see if I can land on the pad. Got to go into the wind here. Let me get behind it here. Where is that pad? There's the pad. Can I land on the pad in the wind? Okay. Automatic landing. Nope. I can't. <laughs> Let me shut it down. And on automatic landing, it doesn't seem to come down very slowly. It didn't shut off the, or actually it doesn't seem to shut off the motors. How about if I do a manual landing? Where's the motor shut down? There we go. Motors do shut down. Can it take off manually? I haven't de demonstrated that yet. Okay, let's try down and out, see if that starts the motors. Yes, it does. Down and out, most sticks, does that stop the motors? Down and out stops the motors too. So, let's start the motors. Try the emergency stop. Okay, that stops it. Okay, we'll do manual takeoff this time. And throttle up. I'm still on high rate, I see. Okay, low rate. Back to low rate. And actually, the wind's died down a bit, so we'll stay in low rate for a bit. While it's, the wind's died down, let's get up close again. Listen to that tail rotor. <laughs> As it bites in the wind. Yeah, let's go around. You know, a lot of these times I come out here, I always forget to keep my head up. <laughs> and I lose a lot of the video because the drone is just a little, or a helicopter in this case, is just off the side of the camera. I'm hoping it's working well this time. <laughs> my wife and dog are waiting for me over there. They want to go for a walk here. Uh, here at this Pleasant Ridge Park, they got a real nice uh, walking trails here through the woods. Real beautiful area. And I'm going to go take advantage of them after this flight here. After we see how long this flies. I want to see what the, uh, if this goes, if the controller beeps like they said it does on low battery. Give us a low battery warning. Zoom. Zoom. Coming around again. Now, again, you know, uh, you can't do tricks with this. You know, like loops. <laughs> That's the next step is for them to make a uh, version that, that you can turn off the uh, auto stabilization for a second so you can try, try to do a loop. Like, you know, pull back there and see if it'll a loop. But right now, uh -uh. All stabilized. Again, to make it more beginner friendly.
Okay, that's it. There's, at least this did not beep. Is this beeping? There ain't no more flight time. That's the flight time you get. How about the back light? Is that, yeah, there you go. The back light blinks. So I guess that's your LVC warning. I did not hear any beep coming from this. So I also really doubt that uh, the uh, this will beep when you reach the edge of 80, 80 meters, 100 meters, you know, the uh, reception range. I got a feeling all that happens is this is just going to probably land <laughs> once you get out of, you know, exceed the range of this uh, controller. So that's the outdoor flight of the Ishin E129 and what it can do. So hope you enjoyed that flight. I'm going to try to do a follow-on uh, video for this to show it flying indoors. So hopefully hang on for that, folks. Welcome back to Quadcopter 101's indoor flight test facility, or basement if you prefer. <laughs> Let's take this for a flight. Putting uh, the battery in and putting it on my landing pad and turning on the transmitter and binding it to the, quad, or the helicopter by up and down on the throttle. We have bind and taking off by automatic takeoff. Now the first thing I want to do is trim this up. Let's go over here in the light where we got better lighting. Well, <laughs> and let's test, see how well this is trimmed. Actually, it's trimmed rather nicely. It's moving forward a bit, so I'm going to pull it back on the trim by going bump until it stops. Now it's moving to the left a little bit, so I'm going to bump it one to the right. So we are pretty good right there. Okay, what I want to do, folks, is just fly it around here. Show it's agility, not agility. Without crashing it, that is. Here, I'm gonna get down lower too. Going over to hot tub. Going around the pool here. Ooh, whoa, careful. <laughs> so bringing it over this way, and I wanna bring it up close to, sh to show it to you and hover indoors with this altitude hold. You know, that makes this very easy to fly. Let's bring it over closer to me, too. Okay, and let's tr check the trim one more time. It's moving to... Uh, that's probably my breath pushing it. Let's push forward one time on it. And that trim is holding it right now. Now it's drifting to the right, so I'm going to bump it left. Bump it one... No, that's good, right there. So there we go, we're trimmed. So let's see what we can do indoors here. Going around, without hitting the hot tub, that is. Yeah, you know, indoors in the winter time, this could be a lot of fun, especially for folks who have a big basement, <laughs> like me. Let's go above the hot tub, go over the hot tub and come around. Bringing it over here. Now I got a box on the ground here, excuse me. Box on the ground. What I'm going to try to do is let's try landing on that box. Um, there's a thing, there's a trick to landing, folks, that I've discovered. When you get close to the ground, you're getting a lot of downdraft from the helicopter, and that creates a lot of turbulence, especially as you get close to the ground. So if you want to do a precision landing, what you want to do is try to get right over where you want to land and then just slam it in before that turbulence hits it. I'm going to try right now. Slam it. No, oh, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Get back into the air. It's stuck on the carpet. Went up again. I want to get one landing with this thing. You want, got to get up higher. Get away from the turbulence. And try it one more time. There we go. Shut down, shut down. <laughs> Almost slid off the top there. Okay, automatic takeoff. So, oh no, you know, winter time, this could be a great, to, great toy to play with. I'm just going to play around here in front of you so you can see it up close. You know, I was flying outdoors and I just reviewed that footage and most of it is pretty far away. So I want you to see it close. So we're going to fly it around here indoors just for a little bit. As you fly it, you get a better feel for it and its abilities and what it can do. And what I, you know, the altitude hold feature is perfect for indoor flying. Um, again, the E119 without the altitude hold would it'd be a bit, lot more difficult to fly this indoors than this particular quadcopter or helicopter. So you can just practically let go of the stick and it keeps on flying. That'd be hard with the E119. So 
Uh, again, nice little helicopter, I gotta admit. And it's very responsive. And this is low rate. <laughs> okay, let's go around those poles one more time without smacking something. And I'm gonna call it quits here. I just want to show it to you indoors. So E119, neat helicopter. So hope you enjoyed these flights from Quadcopter 101 to you, Quadcopter 101. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.